Thank you. I would like to talk today about fossil fuel divestment at the national level as the Green New Deal is changing the conversation on environmental justice. We need to be thinking about what can we do as a city to create a Green New Deal for Charlottesville that amplifies these efforts for bold climate action happening at the national level. Good environmentalism is not a niche issue. It is directly connected to affordable housing, economic and racial justice, and economic inequality. And I think some of the two most powerful things City Council can do for moving towards a Green New Deal for Charlottesville is, again, committing itself to a bold greenhouse gases emissions reduction target of 100% clean energy by 2035, which matches what other cities have already done, and divestment from fossil fuels in the war economy. Charlottesville, on its own, can obviously not solve the climate crisis, but actions we take can reverberate statewide and nationally. Fossil fuel divestments is one of the most powerful actions we can take on climate change. The hundred top corporations in the world are responsible for over 70% of fossil fuel emissions. Climate change is a problem of corporate power, and if we can pull our money away from the corporations and the military-industrial complex responsible for the climate crisis, we can start to strike at the roots of it. This is not a niche movement. If we support fossil fuel divestment, we will be following the lead of cities that include, in part, Burlington, Vermont, Berkeley, California, New York City, Washington, D.C., and Madison, Wisconsin. It is support, the divestment movement is supported by the Secretary General of the U.N. It is supported by 350.org and other leading climate change organizations. And there is a clear precedent locally for divestment. The city in the past has divested from South Africa during apartheid and from Sudan during the civil war there. The city currently uses a corporate bond from ExxonMobil and has significant fossil fuel investments in retirement commissions and other areas. This is something we can take action on, and I think if we divest from both fossil fuels and the war economy, we would become the first city in Virginia to do so, and we could help spark a divestment movement throughout Virginia. I would encourage everyone in the audience who supports fossil fuel divestment to stand up right now. If you have your signs, hold them up. This is a popular movement supported locally in part by Indivisible Charlottesville, the Charlottesville Amnesty International, Sunrise Charlottesville, Together Charlottesville, and at least four current city council candidates, including myself, Sina McGill, Lloyd Snoop, and Paul Long. Please take action on divesting from fossil fuels in the war economy, and I have a resolution here that the city could support to again make it clear that City Council wants city staff in hiring its new investment manager and managing its investment portfolio to divest from fossil fuels in the war economy. It's the moral choice, and it makes fiscal sense as well. Thank you. My name is David Swanson. I live on Gillespie Avenue. Uh, one of the side benefits, perhaps, of what I'm proposing could be some good press for Charlottesville that would cost exactly nothing. The petition at divestseville.org, which has hundreds of signatures there, uh, is proposing that the city have a policy of no longer investing in weapons companies or fossil fuel companies. And I was surprised to know that the city does do that. We were never asked. Uh, I would be happy to go with a public vote if we are asked. I would be confident which way it would go. Uh, the city has passed resolutions I've been so proud of in the past against wars, asking the U.S. Congress to move money from militarism to human and environmental needs, uh, and yet we've got our public money invested in weapons companies, companies engaged in environmentally destructive wars in countries where most of the people are not described as white. We have weapons companies selling weapons around the world to dictatorships, U.S. weapons on both sides of numerous wars, weapons companies that the city of Charlottesville has our money in, selling weapons to Saudi Arabia to create the biggest humanitarian disaster the world has seen in years in Yemen. We have fossil fuel companies with our money in them while we're talking about these initiatives to do better on climate or investing our money in the worst possible entities that there are, corporations like ExxonMobil. This is our future we're talking about. These are the companies that our national security advisor, John Bolton, says would benefit from overthrowing the government of Venezuela, a possible new war. This is not something that the state of Virginia can prevent. 
This is something the city has the right to do. There are many things it can't. This is one it can, and it's done before, as Michael mentioned earlier. And this is not a, na a national and global issue only. This affects our climate right here in Charlottesville, the gun violence that comes to Charlottesville, the war culture that comes to Charlottesville. And you can make just as much and more money investing more ethically as you make investing without any regard to ethics. And, and this city has had a regard to ethics before on Sudan, on South Africa, etc. If you go to divestseville.org, you will see hundreds of signatures. I can send them to you by email if you'd like. I, I would like, again, to ask everyone to stand up if they support taking our public money out of weapons companies and out of fossil fuel companies and making that a policy for this city and setting that example for other cities in this state as cities around this country are doing. Thank you and I would welcome any questions you might have now or in the future. Thank you. So, Mr. Murphy, I have a question. Mr. Murphy, if we were if we were, because I'm just looking it up and then I'm reading the resolution and whatnot, and I've read some of the materials beforehand, but if we as a city were to look at divesting, what would that look like? Because I know there's a lot of different companies in which we currently are tied to, maybe that we shouldn't be for whatever reason, but in this particular instance that's been requested by several members of the community, what would that look like? Well... I think that uh, you want to bring in some folks from the Retirement Commission, yes, sir. Uh, particularly uh, Mr. Vandiver uh, mm -hmm. as the person charged by the public uh, as making some of those investment decisions as an elected treasurer. Um, the, you know, the commission is going out to bid now right. uh, for a investment firm, and so it makes good sense that uh, you know, we might include that as part of the scope in the RFP to, so that anybody who responds Knows what we might say. be able to advise us on that particular issue. So uh, I think there is some complexity in unpacking as right. the city has many different investments, right? Uh, but uh, it certainly could be done. I think the first two steps would be to learn from Mr. Vandiver and to um, make sure that we're asking all of the firms to be able to advise us on that and not to select a firm who can't do that work. I would be, uh, on the lines of that, I would be interested if any of my colleagues would also have the appetite to place Mr. Vandiver on a council agenda maybe late April or early May. He obviously couldn't do it at the next meeting or anything like that because there's a lot of preparation, but um, us getting Mr. Vandiver on an upcoming agenda to have this discussion, um, to hear out exactly what our options may be. Um, Neil Walker, mm -hmm. I, I would like to second Mr. Bill, okay. uh, Councilor Bill on these requests, and I, and I believe uh, that our attorney is also looking over the resolution. Okay. Um, so I, I do agree with that, and okay. I, and, and to Mr. Swanson, um, what, six years ago you brought forth a resolution where it was about tactical decisions concerning the use of military, where the city of Charlottesville was weighing in whether or not to bomb certain parts of the world. Um, I couldn't agree with that. I didn't think we were qualified to make a decision about military tactics. Uh, this, however, is really something we can look into. So I really appreciate, I appreciate what you've done. Um, because it does get to the point where, as a local elected government, we can make these kinds of decisions. And yes, I, I have always been strong about the environment and, and weaning us off of fossil fuels. To do that is going to be expensive. That's why we've been having these challenging conversations about changing our streets so that they're not so autocentric. Something's got to give. Something's got to be it taxes or be it taking away from other priorities. But the principle is really sound. So I really am very, very, very interested in looking at this. Mm -hmm. And it is something local government can do, so I appreciate you being sensitive yeah. to that. Well, that's two of Thank those. you. And I guess my, my contribution to this, and I also want to, I want to thank the activists and Mr. Swanson for bringing this and all the, the passion. I've done some research into the divestment movement also. I would, I, I would think, especially going forward, there's a whole spectrum of how you can view your investments. There's even social impact investing where mm -hmm. you have a much more fine filter 
to me, there are two different things going on here. There are stocks and companies related to energy, and there are ones related to defense. Mm -hmm. In my view, we would – those are two separate, separate resolutions because we may in the future want to divest from another problematic industry. And I would prefer that we view those separately and we just – there, there are two different objectionable classes of industries that have been put together into this one resolution, and I think we're looking at two different ones. And they could be evaluated separately, and then we could even look at other, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, you know, municipalities that are looking at gun, like the gun industry. That's a whole separate mm -hmm. industry from ones involved with weapons, nuclear weapons. I, I just, you know, I found a, a a militarization, I don't know if this is the one Mr. Swanson looked at, but it's putting together nuclear weapons and defense and, you know, there's, I, I just think we, we're going to need to be careful, which I assume that everybody would want us to be, while also being ethical mm -hmm. and looking at the purposes of all this. And I just think that there are two different classes of industry that this mm -hmm. resolution is looking at. But so, that may not be the So if it seems as if we have the appetite, I mean, maybe the second meeting in April would be appropriate. It may have to be the last meeting. Yeah, because staff's really overwhelmed with budget. The last, oh, right. Sorry. First meeting in May, more Mr. than Arby, likely. What are you, what are you right, because we have the budget stuff and all that. Could, could I respond very briefly to what's been said? No. Yes, you yeah. <laughs> No, I can't. We've had yours. But okay, so we. Either way. Okay. So he said either. Either? Okay. So then if, if there's appetite for it in that regards, I guess the other question would be, since there is currently, or is the RFP currently out, Mr. Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's I just want to check on the timing of that. I think we should uh, probably message the council tomorrow when okay. they can investigate no what the potential timing of the RFP is, see how that jibes with council's <laughs> desire to have it come in front of them. To hear, okay. okay. So then that's a win. Excuse me, Mayor Walker, um, it does that's seem fine. like Mr. Swanson wants to respond. Would it be possible for letting him respond to the Sorry, to know the point that Mr. Councilor Sigma oh. made. Is that what you wanted to do? He, he, just less than a minute. I just want to respond very briefly, if that's okay. Oh, I, 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 I respect the, the notion that there are two separate issues here, and, and I included them both because I think they're both important, but also to make the point that they're not really separate issues, that, that the military is one of the biggest destroyers of the environment, that the wars are fought for fossil fuels openly, explicitly in many cases, that the money that's needed to protect the environment is sitting in the military budget, uh, that it's, it's very hard to really separate these two. And I would also strongly encourage avoiding the notion and the word defense when talking about weapons dealers that deal weapons to dictatorships and democracies alike around the globe, the weapons that are used on both sides of most wars, which side is the defensive one. Uh, I, I, I don't think there's any need to use that, uh, that particular word unless it's, it's really explicitly justified. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.